Previously on the Embracing the Journey podcast. We're black. Right. So we're automatically excellent. Okay. It's something you need to embrace. It's something you need to live by. Be proud to be black. Love your skin. Continue to stand in your truth. Love your skin and stand up for yourself. Welcome back to Black History Month, Embracing the Journey podcast with Norris Frederick. So, so let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between dating and marrying, you know, an individual? Like, are there different responsibilities? Are there different sets of rules? Like, what's that looking like <laughs> for, for you guys? Well, uh, duh, there are different <laughs> set of rules once you're married. <laughs> I mean, if there's no rules, no boundaries, then I don't know. I technically don't think it's like a marriage, mm-hmm. even though, you know, people have all kinds of every marriage looks different. Right. Um, so and dating. I mean, you can go, OK, I'll see you later. Or we've had a heated fight. I'm going home. He's going home. But when you're married. Oh, no, no, no. Mm. You got to work that out. You cannot just you cannot just leave. Right. And take a couple days off and then come back. Right. So there's one difference between dating and being married. Having a husband that plays a professional sport that's in the limelight. Mm -hmm. What is that world like when it comes to women saying like, oh, I was with your husband last night or I have his phone number or he's messaging me. Like, do you deal and have you dealt with any of that? No, never. Just kidding. (laughs) I was in here like. (laughs) My man is a saint. Uh, nope, nope, nope. I dealt. I went through it. I went through the ringer. And I know people like to kind of hold the doing kind of whatever they want to just professional athletes. But it happens every day with everybody, professional or not. Um, it just, I don't know. I think... It is more for girls. It's just they they just like to say it more and put it out there more and um, start drama more and all that kind of stuff. But how I handle things like that or situations like that, I have one instance when we were all out in a big group. There was somebody there that he used to be in a long-term relationship with And her friend, we're across the bar here. They're all the way on the other side. And she's kind of like mocking me and taunting me. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. And she keeps going and whatever. So she comes and approach. Didn't she approach you, Marcus? I think she did. And I'm like, oh, oh, no. Oh, hell no. The, The friend did. Yes, the friend didn't. I think it was on, you know, just trying to mess with me. Right, right. 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 And so words mm. were exchanged. And um, I took off my shoe. Mm, you was wearing a heel? I was. <laughs> and Why I, am I over here instigating it? Like, yep. So, so you, you had heels on. I had heels on. Took I took off, off my heel and told her that I would whoop her ass okay. with my shoe. Mm. And... Um, I got carried out of the of the way you guys were at a bar. Yeah, we were at what club was that? I cannot remember the name of the club. This happened at a club. Oh, yeah. Like a nightclub or like a day club. Oh, at a nightclub. I just hold on. Let me let me just paint this picture for everybody. Isn't that what you were talking about? Girls approaching. Are you talking about just like during the day when girls? I mean, all of you. We're going to get to all of that. (laughs) So 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 Jessica and Marcus are at the club minding their own business. A woman Marcus used to be with like a long term relationship with. Was across the bar. Yes. Her friend was taunting you. Yes. The friend approaches you or no. approaches Marcus. Mm-hmm. You're like, uh-uh, not mm-hmm. having that. The best, the best linebacker Marcus has ever seen took the shoe off. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, in order to get to him, you got to get through me. Right, right. Security's over there hitting you with one of these. He, w- They were actually laughing. Yeah, they were laughing. And yeah, as they were like, you've got to go. So they, 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 they put you out or did they pick you up and remove you? They didn't pick me up. They were just kind of, 
I can't I can't exactly remember, but I know I had to go. <laughs> Hold on, because I feel like I've been in this situation a few times. Mm-hmm. What was the conversation like on the way home? Was it Marcus's fault? Always. Yeah, no, I, I can vouch because it, it was my fault too. Always, I'm like, you were dating that girl, and because you were dating that, you know, whatever. You, it's always his fault. Right. It's, it's probably all, you know, like you said, it's always your fault. Facts. I believe it. So, so, a, 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 like Marcus just being Marcus, mm-hmm. playing football, being great on the field attracts a certain demographic of personnel, right? Mm-hmm. Male or female, doesn't right. even matter. Oh yeah. How would you expect? your boyfriend or husband to be in that situation to act accordingly for your comfort? Or was he just going to take an L regardless? Well, he, he took, he took the L. I mean, but that was a long time ago. Right. I am a different person. Um, Wait, hold on, hold on. Do we have to think about it real quick? I am. I am. I am a different person. Marcus is a different person. Um, you know, he's he's not out here in those streets to where I need to possibly take my shoe off yeah. and then get mad at him for everything. Um, but, yeah, I can't remember what he did. I'm sure he was laughing as well. <laughs> and I think some of his friends, and I think they were laughing as well. Um, but just kind of reassure, it's, it's all good. It's all good, Jess, is what he could have done. It's all yeah. good. I would have backed you up if you were fighting her. Mm. Or that's what I want to hear. Right. Were you guys dating or married at that point? We were married. married. We were married. But when we were dating, it was the same. Girls would just come up just right in front of me in the bar. And I'd be like, excuse excuse me. Really? <laughs> yes. All the time. I used to be like. Just Move. no, no spatial awareness. Like just. not, no. There was spatial. They just didn't care. Mm. They did not care. So, um, yeah, yep. It was like that. So I was constantly having to get get away. Right. Get away from my man. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Looking to start a podcast, live stream, make a presentation, or perform on stage. Samson has all the gear you need to help you become a successful content creator. To learn more, visit Samson Tech. Welcome back to Embracing the Journey podcast. We're here with Jessica Trufant, and it's getting deep. (laughs) So, so was it, so with, with you knowing all this, Mm -hmm. has it been worth it? Like, has it been worth marrying an individual that is sought after by whomever can get their hands on them? Is it worth it? I don't know. Psych, just kidding. No, it is totally worth it because I get the real Marcus Trufant, right? He gets, he comes home to me and we have our special relationship and all of those things and kind of the outside noise really just, it doesn't matter. So it has been a privilege and a blessing and um, just a joy to be married to Marcus, even though he can be a burden sometimes. No, right. just kidding. Ooh, I'm kidding. I was co-signing it's, too. It's me, I'm sure, but <laughs> um, pretty high maintenance. Um, but yeah, let's say a girl finds herself in the realm of dating a professional athlete. What would be some advice that you would tell her, starting off their relationship? that you had to work through and now understand completely? Ooh. um, Sharpen your nails. No, I'm Mm. kidding. Um, That, first of all, no relationship is perfect, right? And to set your boundaries. And um, I don't want to say have no, (laughs) have zero expectation, but... um, just kind of be prepared to go on a on a ride on a journey because it is when you start dating uh NFL player or any athlete professional athlete um 
from just their schedules, even as dating their schedules and trying to fit your time in between there to all the attention and to the girls and all of the distractions and all that kind of stuff. So I would just tell her, you are, be prepared, buckle up for a ride and stay true to yourself. And um, if it's not working, go. Do right. not stay for reasons that, you know, are not good reasons, right? What was it like when he had to travel? Did you did you travel with him to games? Really? Oh no, that was asking for a friend, obviously. <laughs> I was pregnant for ten years. Jesus Christ. Right. In the good way. Love right. you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was pregnant for a very long time. And so traveling and oh yeah, I didn't fly back then. Got it. Right. So traveling wasn't really an option. So I was here slaving with my kids. Wait, on Black History Month? We, well, that's the, that's the my bad. Going? We're, we're going to retract that statement. I wasn't slaving, but I was definitely close. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, you know, it's it's work. And the more kids we had, the harder it was when he was out of town. So when he came back into town and he would <laughs> he would have to go to practice. And as soon as he came home from practice, I was out. Doing whatever. I would go work out. Yeah. Um, when you're watching your husband play football on mm-hmm. TV and he falls down and doesn't get up right away, mm-hmm. did you – deal with that what is that walk us through that and what that feels like and and mind you you just said you've been you were pregnant for 10 years so you you guys have a family together Mm -hmm. what 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 kind of thoughts would go through your head if you would see see that oh man well I did see that on tv I actually was hosting a breakfast for um the ladies on the team um And so they were all at my house. And I think, I can't remember where Marcus was at. Maybe you were in Chicago or maybe he was in Chicago. I'm not quite sure. But there was a play and he fell to the ground and he did not get up. And, you know, his arms are kind of back and you realize that he is knocked out. Mm. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, oh my God. So then they cut to commercial. And I'm like starting to freak out because all the things go through your head. Right. Like, oh, my gosh. All the bad things that could possibly. Oh, yeah. I'm going straight in the gutter. I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I'm about to be a widow. I'm about, you know. Right. Right. All those things. All these different scenarios play out. And so then it comes back on. He's still on the ground. And after commercial. Yes. Then people are around him. All this kind of stuff. It cuts to commercial again. And I'm like on my knees looking at the screen and I am completely. And this is around other wives. Yeah. Mm. And I am completely helpless. And, you know, they were supportive and um, yeah, they were very supportive. And so then comes back and they're putting him on a stretcher and getting him out of there. And all I wanted to do was like talk to him. Yep. So I was calling um, Sandy. I can't remember what she was with the Seahawks. She was huge with the Seahawks. Hi, Sandy. (laughs) Um, And she was kind of giving me the protocol and kind of reassuring once he gets to the hospital and he's stable, you know, that he will call. I talk to his mom. And next week on the Embracing the Journey podcast. I've always been true to myself. And I know some women have said they have lost themselves. Right. um, Because of, you know, the status and all of that kind of stuff and the accolades and all the attention that their husband receives. But I never felt that way. How did you know how to vet out like an authentic person that cared about Jess and not what Jess is all encompassing? 